No, thank you. Yeah, I do. Is your first one Pagano's? First one is what? Pagano's, yes. Okay. Everybody in, Larry? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm just bringing John, John Malone on. Okay. I will call the meeting of the Irvington Architecture Review Board to order. At this point, as we usually do, we will start with uh, continuations, revisions, and then go on to new new matters, new uh, applications in an ascending order in which they were received. So we will start with uh, ARB 2205, uh, 90 Fargo Lane and Solar. Hello, hi guys, this is John Malone, Curtis Malone Architecture. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. So I think the change, uh, which I think we sent in the letter, is limited to a solar panel application that was um, that was approved uh, a few months back. What we're proposing to do, and I can share a screen. Yeah. What we're proposing to do is um, rotate the, the panels. Um, we, we basically had a design earlier that had panels in different um, uh, orientation. So uh, because the panel has to point five degrees to the south uh, off level, um, by rotating the panels 90 degrees here, we still have the same kind of uh situation where they're all collected and, and neatly organized but they're actually slightly lower on the roof you know so that because the the longer side is not the side that's angled up if that makes sense so the ang the angle of repose is reduced slightly uh and it's a little bit more of an efficient layout with um you know not having to stick up this high so i don't think there's been any change in panels number but uh it has um sort of improve the layout, basically. Okay, John, uh, I, I do recall the last time we, we went through this uh, application, um, I questioned you on the, um, the setback from the, uh, uh, from the edges of the building, and it's very specific uh, in the code about what that setback should be, and you, uh, um, gave us a, a different um, calculation. Would you care to reiterate that? Sure, so I think what the code had said that for each foot, so for a situation where you have a parapet, it said that you can't exceed the height of the parapet. Uh, and then in, ex in a situation where you have the roof, it said for each foot of height uh, in the unit, that the unit should be set back four feet. And the interpretation that we use for that is an angle of repose, which is a one to four angle. So we're assuming that if the, the panel uh, only goes up six inches, that the setback would only have to be 10 feet to, I mean, two feet to be underneath that angle of repose. And same for parapet, so that you would take that same line back from the parapet if the unit extended above the height of the parapet. So I think all of the units that we've shown, there hasn't been a change there, but they're all um, exceed that. So in most cases, they're behind parapets. Uh, in this case here, there's a roof overhang and a parapet, so it doesn't really um, it doesn't really meet the same um, condition because it's not clear which one to do. But we did the worst case, and it's more than one in four from the um, from the edge of the roof. Yes. So there's no other areas on that on that rooftop that has no parapet. The, the no parapet, the the lack of parapet and roof overhang is in this area here. It's basically these three sides of the lower roof here. The rest of them are parapet based. So what's the the distance from the edge of the roof to the uh, uh, solar? Oh, it's, it is uh, 26 inches 
and the height is uh, six and a half inches now off the roof. So what is that? Should be oh yeah, it's twenty six. So, so it's it's over that. I mean, actually, what's called out here is the minimum. It's actually greater than what's shown here. She's shown minimums here, but um, whatever we should have indicated exact. It's actually more like three feet is what it is. Okay. I, I recall the conversation now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what the intent is to make you know make sure that it's less than one four. Do I have any other questions from the board? No. No. Okay, uh, John. Because it's a uh, solar, I have to open up a public hearing, so I will do uh, open a public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Larry, do we have anybody with their hands raised to, to discuss this matter? Uh, not at this point. Okay. At this point, I will close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. At this point, uh, I'm satisfied with uh, um, what I've heard and what I've seen. Do I have, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good to go. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for your help. Okay. We will now go on to new matters. Uh, we will start with 22-51, 64 Main Street, uh, and it's a siding replacement. Hi, good evening. Yeah, how are you? Good. Sorry, I saw the agenda. I thought I was last. Uh, so <laughs> just uh, setting up my screen here. No problem. Um, okay, well, I, I think uh, I'm assuming many of you are familiar with the property um, on Main Street there on the corner of Ecker. Um, it's really just uh, looking to replace the siding um with the um eight eight and a quarter inch hardy board uh plank siding in a light mist color which is basically a light gray um i provided a sample to the building department i can also share a screen with kind of an example uh and sample as well as uh you know an example um of the finished product on a different on a different building, if that's helpful. We actually have the two samples in front of us. Great. Um, the, the, the only comment I'd make, and I tried to write it on there, but the um, the siding will be in a smooth finish. So right. I think the cedar mill it's finish. Yeah, it's on here. And it's it's part of your application as well. Right. Um, I just thought I, that was an important point there. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what the what the size of the uh, uh, planking is on the, the house now? Is it five or is it? It's eight? it's actually um, it's exposed seven, so it's probably a little bigger uh, siding, eight inch siding, but it's it's exposed seven. So we're we're going to be replacing um, basically the same size. Um, it'll just be you know in a in a higher quality siding. What's on there now is aluminum. This is obviously Hardy Plank, um, which uh, is a fiber uh, is a fiber board, um, and additionally, it'll obviously be uh, you know a little bit modernized, but we think still keeps a nice historical character um, to the building with the larger uh, plank size, um, you know. And we um, that that's really it. We're we're trying to keep the trim um, to uh, you know a simple white. Um, that would be in a PVC, which you have this material there of also a higher quality material than what's on there now. Um, and yeah, that's essentially it in terms of the scope of the project. Is, is that the white PVC right there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's the trim. Yeah. Well, no window right. replacement? All the windows are remaining? At this time, yeah, there's no uh, window replacement as part of this project. Now I know, doesn't this property go around the corner? 
It does, yes. Yeah. And um, the property, and the the, the, there's it. actually no siding other than the front facade on this property. And that's the way it shall remain? Exactly. Yeah. Over the garages or anything like that? Um, so in on the on the uh, Ecker Street side, there's a separate structure that is part of this um, property, but it's actually a separate structure. And there right. is some shingle siding above the garage, uh, the garages, um, but we're not touching that building um, at this point. Okay. And, and and when you look at the two buildings, there's it's very they're two different, either completely different buildings, different architectural style. Um, you wouldn't know that they're on the same property necessarily. Um, would it would it be helpful to show an example of another building that was you know has this essentially very similar um, the same sure. siding? Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Okay, so uh, if I can share my screen, I will do so. Okay, so I think I, I think you should see it here, but um, you know it, the contrast I think is um, quite nice. And uh, while it's um, you know an updated modern look, it's also pretty timeless, um, I think. And um, we'll do a better job of you know identifying some of the other architectural features of the facade um, by you know being able to highlight the windows and um, you know some of the uh, the way the facade moves in and out, um, as opposed to just all being white the way it is right now. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I think it's a nice improvement. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe we have any more questions. I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good to go. Thank you very much. Have a great night. You too. I think those windows would be nice too. Yeah. <laughs> it's my dog's favorite route. <laughs> okay. I think a lot of dogs like that. We will. You can. Yeah. We will go on to uh, the next item, which is um, ARB twenty twenty two dash fifty two, and it's fifteen. I can't read my own handwriting. Here close. close. Yep. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you fine. Great. <clears throat> nice to meet you all. I'm the resident at 15 Deerman Close. Uh, this was a newly constructed house that was uh, uh, built by Frank Racanelli. My family and I moved in uh, early August and uh, thrilled to be part of the town, so the village. Um, what we have put forth today uh, is a proposal to build a fence around the backyard of the property. Um, the property is kind of on a, a bit of an elevation, uh, particularly in the backyard, vis-a-vis -vis the, um, vis -vis the, the street that's uh, adjacent to us, which is Stearns Ridge. So, you know, I have two young children, and uh, after spending a couple of weeks there, we thought that it would be, uh, uh, we came to the realization that a, uh, a fence along the perimeter uh, in the backyard that would kind of um, attach to the sides of the house. Uh, would be a uh, would be beneficial and something that we'd like to pursue. So um, I do have uh, the submission up on my screen. I don't know if it would be helpful to share my screen, yeah. but um, yes, would. okay, great. Bear with me one second. Okay, can you guys see that? Okay, so the um, this uh, I'm going to use my mouse to show kind of where the uh, this the this is the backyard here. We have a stone wall that's on the um, on one side of our property that uh, is uh, bordering 17 um, Deerman Close, which is a empty lot at this point. Uh, so the the fence would attach at the in the backyard, which is the the side that is at overlooking Stearns Ridge. 
uh, the fence would kind of uh, come along from the stone wall right around the edge of the grass where the property then has the drop to Stearns Ridge um, all the way up to the side and then connect at the side of the house here. Um, so really from Deerman Close, I think it would be a, um, you know, it would, it would, it, it would be very, um, it, it would, wouldn't really interfere with the views from the Deerman Close side of the street. Um, here's a picture of the style of fence that we're looking for approval here today. Uh, it's just a black, uh, black fence with vertical posts and um, six feet tall is what we'd uh, like to uh, request the board to uh, weigh in on. Is there a reason why it's six foot? Uh, no, none other than I thought that that was, um, I was guided to by, by Frank that that's kind of the standard height that he, he's used in other, for other houses in the neighborhood. he would be right but uh most most times we we prefer five foot high but because of the the, the fence is the type of fence you kind of blends into the uh into the property being that it's black uh, i don't really have a problem with it being being six feet okay. you have uh, three three gates from what i see also you have a small a small section of fence on the north uh, on the where the, the rock uh, ledge is correct yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that will be a short section attaching from the, um, again, from the side of the house to the uh, rock wall. Anybody have any questions? No. no. Were you thinking of it as deer fencing? Um, I guess a uh, side benefit would be deer fencing, um, but really it was more just, uh, you know, for my young children. Again, it's, it's a pretty steep drop, uh, particularly along the uh, rear of the property to Stearns Ridge. So, um, and there's a lot of rocks there. So it's kind of uh, um, really was the, the, the thought behind it was really just a safety matter, but certainly uh, <clears throat> we noticed the, uh, the number of deer that are in and around the property in the neighborhood. So uh, I guess we'd view that as an ancillary benefit. Okay, and I, I, I like the fact that you chose a fence that has a bottom hem, a bottom edge, so. You don't have to worry about the uh, kids crawling out from underneath. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how big the kids are, but. Kids Too big to fall in. Uh, yeah, that, 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 for sure. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? No. No. Okay. I think we're good to go here. I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good to go. Great. Thank you all. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have like six of them. I couldn't believe it when I kept looking at it. <laughs> I was worried it was okay. like a really long meeting. Yeah, that would then make sense. Okay, we'll move on to ARB 22 53, 41 Carla Lane, another fence. Hi there. How are we doing? Hi. Uh, my name is uh, I'm the uh, owner at 41 Carla Lane, um, and we are applying to install a fence in our backyard. Um, and I can yeah. share. The, I can share uh, the survey here. Probably be helpful to take a look at. So here is this is the the back of our home here. Um, and so the, the red lines indicate where the fence would be. Um, and so we want to install this fence for, for two reasons. Um, there is a, a wire fence uh, with some barbed wire on top that runs along the back of the property and along the side here um, on the, the Downingwood condo area. Um, and this area is kind of the, the common area for the, for the condo. Uh, so there are no homes here. There's kind of a, a wooded area that goes down a hill uh, to where the condos are around here. Um, but so the, there's this fence that kind of goes into the back of our property that we were hoping to kind of cover um, at least, um, you know, in, in our backyard area. Um, and also um, another reason we just wanted to have the fence was for, um, was for privacy. Um, 
this area here is close to kind of the back of our home. So it looks into our kind of living room area. Um, so those are the reasons we wanted to install the fence here. Um, and the fence is, um, this is a style of fence. It'll be a, a cedar. Um, it will be painted black. Um, and we were looking for a six feet total fence um, with five feet cedar here and then about a foot of this lattice topping. Um, and here are some photos of the area. So we'd basically be running it alongside here um, along the back of the property. Show us the, the uh, back of the house again. Yeah. Okay, so what's gonna happen with the chain link fence that's there now? I think that would remain. Um, it, that's, I think that's, is that your fence? It is not. It belongs to Downingwood. Uh, we had reached out to them about it, uh, had not heard back. Um, we were thinking that potentially it could be, you know, repaired. Um, but it seems that it's been there for, for a while. Um, so we were just proposing to kind of cover it up on our side of the property, just along these two lines here. I didn't have any issues, anybody? No. No. <clears throat> okay. Uh, since uh, none of the board has any issues with it, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. I think Thanks you'll like the black fence. Ours is black. <laughs> right, we think it'll look nice. We're, we're looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, we're happy with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. When I first saw the photo of it, I thought it might be. Ours is black. Okay, we'll move on to uh, ARB 22-54, uh, 90 Sycamore Lane, uh, also a fence. <clears throat> Hi everyone, just making sure you can hear us. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Uh, I'm Henry Bleckman, my wife, Erin McNamara. Hi. And we moved into 90 Sycamore Lane uh, last April 2021. And uh, we're looking to uh, uh, replace and add a bit of fence uh, basically surrounding our property. Uh, we came into the house uh, basically with uh, uh, two fences uh, installed, one of which I'll share my screen so you can see the uh, layout. This will help. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. You'll see it now. There, it comes. there we go. So on the east side and, and down on the south side, uh, that's the those are the fences that exist currently. Uh, on that east side, you've got a, a, a wooden lattice fence that has seen better days. It probably <laughs> looked uh, uh, very nice at one point, but it's uh, it's tired uh, and and falling apart now. So it's it's certainly a splinter uh, risk with our two year old. Uh, and so we certainly want to replace that. The aesthetic will, will, will be similar with a, a cedar wooden fence. And we're going to have that cedar wooden fence uh, wrap around uh, uh, the rest of the property, too, on the back side. And we'll show you photos in a second. Uh, that's an old chain link fence. Uh, that's uh, uh, not only an aesthetic uh, issue, but it's a safety issue, too. It's falling apart. There are jagged pieces. Uh, parts of it are broken. So uh, some rusty nails. Yeah, so it's a tetanus shot waiting to happen. And so. Uh, that's an issue. And also beyond that, uh, 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 that fence, the chain link fence on the on the south side, uh, it's a water easement with a drop off and, and there are gaps between the chain link fence and the existing wooden lattice fence uh, that a two year old can sneak through. And so we're worried about that. So we want to obviously close that up with one consistent fence all the way around. And if we're uh, doing this job, we want to uh, you'll see on the, the west side there in green, uh, that would close the property. Uh, and obviously keep out, you know, deer would be a secondary thing, but also there, you know, there's, there's traffic that goes up and down Sycamore. So, uh, with a two-year-old, we'd, we'd like to enclose the property if we can. And the style, it's, um, a five foot cedar fence. We would keep it natural with a one inch lattice topper. Okay. Uh, sorry. One foot lattice topper. It's the exact same style that we have now. I think it's quite nice and it, um, really, I think blends in well with the block. So we said it's not broke don't well it literally is broke but um the style is lovely so we wanted to keep the same style and we'd keep it with the natural cedar look 
Okay, and and did I see two different heights on those on those fences? Uh, currently. No, uh, proposed being proposed. Oh no, it would be the the same height throughout. All right, so there's two different colors on that fence, but it's the same fence going all the way around. Yes, and that is because the green on the survey right here, this is where there is no existing fence, but we would like to enclose uh, enclose the backyard. And then the red is where the chain link is here on the back of the property, and then the wooden fence that we currently have over here. So red is existing and oh uh the green is new you're right i see i see in the key i see he did write four foot but um no i'm sorry that's a mistake i didn't catch sooner it would be six feet throughout so all six foot yes Correct. okay i will if we prove it i'll have to prove it as such just because that's what it says on the uh on, on the survey you have there that's no big deal Okay. Um, anybody questions? No. Okay, I will make a motion to approve as amended, and the amendment would be to make all of the fence heights six feet versus what it says on the uh, land survey. Do I have a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, as amended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. One more fence. Okay, so we will uh, then move on to 22-55, 5 Riverview Road, also a fence. The name, Rick? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. M A U T H E. Uh, it's pronounced Mouthy. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've been known to be called that once in a while. What's that? <laughs> oh. Um, okay. Yeah, that's uh, not the first time I've heard that joke. Certainly won't yeah. be the last either. But, <laughs> uh, but good evening. Um, thank you for, uh, hearing our, uh, our application. Uh, my name is Brian Mouthy. Uh, my wife and I moved in to, to the village here uh, back in July at Five River View um, and are, are looking to install a fence along the eastern border of the, of the home. Um, we have, uh, so, and I can share it just in just a second, but maybe just to explain it. Uh, actually, maybe let me share my screen and I can um, show you the, the survey um the eastern border the front of the house i'm sorry is the eastern border the front of the house yeah. no it's no it's to the yeah it's to the right so if um fence would be over here so broadway is here yeah. and then this is riverview road and we'd be installing the fence right here um we have uh, a natural border here with the there's bamboo and a, and a nice rock wall as you can see here uh, there's a lot of foliage and bushes, which which you know block the home over here. And then there's actually another inf a fence that was installed here, um, which was here when we got here. And so you know just to kind of complete the, um, you know, again for privacy purposes, we look to install a fence right here. It's about you know 50 feet or so, I guess. Um, and uh, we'd be looking to install a, a vinyl fence. I have some pictures of what it would look like. Um, well, so here's kind of the style in terms of the diagram. The plan would be to, to install a six foot fence. Um, and I have some pictures here. So this is what it would look like, um, a vinyl material. And um, yeah, that's, that's really it. I don't know if any questions are, is that the color of the vinyl? Yes. Which we thought would be nice to, you know, blend in. There's there's some, you know, kind of foliage in the area where we'd be putting the the fence, and so it uh, thought it helped blend in. 
What's the material of the existing? There is no existing fence there. So uh, yeah, so this there is be new. Yeah. Is there a reason you chose vinyl over wood? We we really hate to approve vinyl. Um, uh, it's durability and 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 cost, honestly. But durability, the primary uh, reason. So the fence would, would be between two houses, your house and the next house. Correct. And how many feet is it? Uh, it's about fifty feet. So there'd be. You know, there's plenty of space between the road, as you can see, and where that fence would be, would fit, would would end. Would you consider stained or painted cedar, as opposed to the vinyl? Um, I'd really prefer not. It's not the front of the house on Broadway. Neighbors were notified. Um, we, we, yeah, we've we discussed it with them. There's not a fence on the back. There is a fence right here uh, along this. And I'll try to zoom in a little bit if that's helpful. But um, there's a fence. It probably goes to about here. Um, and then there's this is there's a lot of like bushes and trees and things here that block um, the view of of this house. And but you know this is fairly open and you know just again for privacy's sake, looking to just install a fence there. What does the existing fence look like? I'm sorry. The, the existing fence that you're pointing to with your mouse there. What what does it look like? Oh, that's uh, it's a chain link fence. With there is a and there's some trees in front of that too, um, but it's a chain link fence. Are you thinking of putting any screening in front of the vinyl? Any screening? Shrubs or you know. Oh yeah, yes, we would. Yeah, that's that would be the idea. We'd put, like to put some um, yeah some plants and, and bushes perhaps here on the inside of the fence. Well, I just think aesthetically, um, as well as wear and tear and, you know, many other reasons, you know, the, the vinyl is not preferable. So. I, I, could, could you elaborate on that a little bit, just to, uh, the, the concerns around the, the wear and tear? Well, help, help me understand your, your concerns, I guess. Anybody chime in here? Because I think, uh, you know, the way vinyl fencing is sold, it's like carefree. You don't have to do anything to it. But if you've seen a, a, a vinyl fence out in the field for more than a couple of years, it's, you know, molded black and green mold all, all, all over it. But um, my main concern with, uh, with the, with the uh, vinyl fence is that it's usually a high gloss finish and and you know uh, headlights tend to reflect off it causing causing a problem but in this case we have used we have allowed on sides of houses the uh the vinyl um somebody wanted to put it along broadway and we had to you know recommend against it and, and in fact they used a a wood fence along broadway and then used the vinyl in the back where it was going to be covered by uh, foliage but uh, I'm, I'm going to tend to, uh, to lean towards allowing the, uh, the vinyl fence on that particular stretch uh, of your property. I mean, Brian, it's not that we wouldn't allow it. I'm just think, trying to say that aesthetically, it, it would certainly not be the first choice or even for, you know, wear and tear. And, um, you know, it is a lovely neighborhood. So, you know, just I think we're tasked with trying to, you know, have things remain as as much that way as possible. So, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please finish. Well, I think it's just that we're tasked with, you know, the aesthetic um, 
part of it as well. So, you know, that's why I'm just trying to point out that there are options that, you know, would would probably be better in terms of those those concerns. So I'm um, understood. And um and we we also, as I mentioned, we moved in in July and uh, have been really loving uh, our street and and the area and you know fell in love with with the beauty and the aesthetic of the town in general and have uh, you know some of the projects we've we've undertaken um, you know in our home and around the, the the yard have been to with the goal of you know improving the aesthetic and um, you know replanting some shrubbery and and things like that and uh, and so very much it center of mind focus for us as well. And, um, you know, I think to your question, and I probably should have elaborated on it earlier was the plan to, as I mentioned, put some, some bushes in here as well, and some flowering plants perhaps that would, um, you know, really add to the aesthetic. And, uh, you know, in terms of, I know it's, it's just my word here that you're going off of, but we, are, my wife and I are very, uh, you know, neat and clean people that take pride in how things look and would certainly, um, you know, ensure that, you know, whatever is, is put there and with the, really the goal would be, you know, for the, the thought process was that the vinyl would allow us to actually keep it a cleaner look um, over time as it, as it ages and, and whatnot. And so that would definitely be, you know, a central focus for us. Okay. Well, you sound thoughtful. Thank you. Are there any questions? No, I mean, uh, uh, as long as we discussed it with the neighbor, I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay, uh, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You too. All right, moving on. I had to try. Yeah, I get you. Uh, uh, ARB 22-56-16, Eilinka Lane, uh, solar panels. Hi, this is Chris Hale with uh, Sun Blue Energy. Uh, Chris Hale with Sun, or for some reason the video's up. Uh, okay. Hi, Hi, uh, Chris Hale with Sun Blue Energy. Uh, we are the contractor on the project and uh, we're installing solar panels in the back of the house. So would you bring up the application? Would you share it with us? Yeah. Do you see this? We do. Okay. Okay. So they're all going on the back of the house. And so you can see this is the main roof, this is the lower roof, and then you have the uh, dormer back here, a little porch, three season room. Could you go back to the other, the, the uh... yes. So the is streets up here. So my imagination is that side roof in the shade. Yeah, they may have to trim some trees, but it's, uh, um, yeah. You want to show us the arrays? Yeah, sure. So you have this is the uh, main house array. Okay. And then this is that other lower roof right here. And all these panels are required to achieve the uh, the number that you're looking to get to. 
Yeah. Yep. Okay. Can you show us some? You have some photos of the house itself, do you? Uh, yeah. That's where the solar panels are going to go. Oh, can you see this? Oh, not yet. No. Okay. Can you see this? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. So this is the from the view from the back of the house. Okay. So the solar panels are going up on this main roof side roof and then here and on the other side here any of the pictures that you have of the surrounding area so you get an idea of you know who's looking at that part of the house your neighbors behind the camera yeah see. should be noted that that you have uh, noticed the uh the neighbors as per uh village code and that um, we have copies of all the receipts of of the uh, direct mailings so we went to that extent properly this is the view from the roof as you can see it's just a lot of trees in that back okay we're still looking at the first picture oh, okay Okay, so that's the house. As you can see, it's you really if you're be behind them, you're really not really seeing those solar panels because this line of trees here. This is the cul-de-sac right here. This is the front of the house right here. You had suggested that maybe some of those trees would be trimmed, though. If the trees are trimmed at all, would the neighbors then be able to see the roof at all? Possibly, yeah, but I don't think so because there's a huge line of trees, but if they're trimmed down. There is a possibility, but I, they're not gonna trim them. They'll probably trim them down to the level of the roof. And so people still probably have a difficulty seeing solar panels. And even if they do, it's in the back of the house. I'm not sure if it's, a, yeah, I, I mean. I think the tree that, that's covering that area that I referred to is right where the, the number 16 is. So it's not part of those main trees, uh, tree group in the back, it's probably you know, next to where that, that number 16 is, that tree, that clump of trees right there. Mm -hmm. And in this neighborhood, they're all over the place. Um, um, okay. Any questions from the board? No. That was my only concern, which is the neighbor's views. I think uh, if there was if there were neighbor views issues, it would block them from seeing the house instead of past the house. I don't think it would really be a viewshed issue. Okay. I think it's sort of ideal in terms of the way they fall. For that neighborhood especially. Yeah. Um, okay. I will. Uh, I don't have any questions, more questions at, the, at this time from the board, so I will open up the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Larry, if you could see that if there's a, a show of hands um, from, the, uh, from the public to discuss this. Uh, no hands are up. Okay. Okay, I will make a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, at this point, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, you're in favor? No, no, I'm in favor. Okay. Sorry. So you're okay. Four, four to zero. He's trying to get additional. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good to go.
Now we have a run of serial eviction changes. Okay. Moving on, we go to ARB 22-57, 13 North Cottonet Street, and it's listed as an exterior elevation change. This one I actually went to. I went to the house. Oh, you did? What's on the next block from my house? Yeah. What's <laughs> They were here not that long ago. They put the fence in. Your video is off. What? what? That's... That you can see you now. Hello. Good evening. Hello. My name is Stephen Cost. I'm the engineer for the owner, Aileen Katz. And this is for an exterior elevation change at 13 North Continent. Uh, most of the exterior changes in the rear of the house. Okay. Which is, let's just move this out of the way, which is in the back of the property. Um, you can see the photo. It's taken from the rear property line. You have existing uh, porch and existing terrace. We plan on replacing an existing door and a window with two sliding doors, uh, fixed glass, and right in here in this area here. Then this is a larger window, which we plan on proposing uh, a smaller window. This is an existing old door, which we plan on putting in uh, two same size windows. And again, this is in the rear of the property. And this property is much higher than the property in back of us which faces the opposite street. Um, the other exterior change is right here, which is an existing three panel garage door, which we propose to put in a single door in the center and two windows on each side of the door. Underneath the windows, we propose to have painted brick to match the existing painted brick foundation adjacent to the existing garage door. The color of the door will match the existing green that's existing and all the uh, windows and upper door trim will be white to match the existing trim that's on the house presently. So I'm happy to answer any yes, questions. Is the garage door original? The garage door is original. I went, over to, I went over to see it. You know, I I think it's kind of charming, you know, with that house, but is it the right, original? Right, but the door? garage itself is not a usable space because the garage is so tight and small on the inside. Yeah. So no, the garage I itself is being eliminated. And that's why yeah. we tried to match the style of the door with the six pane uh, glass window above and keep the color. I thought I saw a note somewhere in the application along the lines of red brick to match existing brick. Can you just show us where where the red brick is happening? The red brick is in the, in the photo, right where I have the pointer. That's all painted red brick right here. Oh, okay. So it seems a little odd to bring the red brick around to the back. If you zoom in on the back photo. Again, because that field stone it would be impossible to match. Right here, you're talking about, yeah, this field stone would be impossible to match. So what are they doing? They want to achieve a room down there underneath the deck? Is that the idea? Correct. Yeah. The other thing about those those windows, the scale kind of bothers me. That uh, used to have the two over two, the elongated windows, and now you're going to like a, I don't know what that is exactly. Is, is there a window schedule on this? I I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I said I, I don't 
the, the scale of the windows in the bottom there with the red right here underneath. these yeah, two seems out of place with the rest of the house um your what was existing there appears to be a two over two i think is it two over one or two uh, over two that's a... okay this was a door which was yep. abandoned in in this repair and this was a large uh, double hung window which has a sill height of probably a foot above grade so that's the reason they were looking to make in still putting light in that room but have it a little higher and how far back does that wall fall from the deck i can see it it's indented uh which wall are we talking about well the deck doesn't the deck protrude out further to the west than that wall we're talking about right where here the windows are? yes right here that's, that's on I'm the saying. order of uh, that's on the order of uh 32 inches oh okay so it's not too much It does change the way you see it a bit. You're talking right here. Mm -hmm. Right. What what type of windows and doors are going on this project? I didn't see listed anywhere. Uh, the windows are, I believe, a Marvin double hung wood window, and they'll be white clad on the outside to match the existing windows. You want to make an issue with those lights on the window? Two over one, but like above? Uh, it's more the scale that bothers me. It just feels a little disjointed. But, uh, you know, it's on the back of the house, so it's like just a demonstration. So, right. so just the opening. It doesn't bother me, I think, because it pulls back, you know? I don't know that. Anyone's really going to see it to speak up? You know? yeah, well, no, no, nobody's going to see it. Yeah. Sure. It's not the owner. Yeah. Possibly the Buckhead house behind it. You know, it's the row house that's across from the post office that aligns with kind of the first and second one. Just, just one comment. Uh, my, this is in error. They are going to be two over one to match the existing windows that are there. Oh. It's satisfying to me. I was the one who was bothered by that, but I, I get, I get yeah. Randy's issue though. Okay. No, that'll be nice. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Nope. No. Okay. I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you Very so much. much. I have the next uh, application as well. Convenient. So we are now talking about 22-58 Field Point Ridgeway Drive. Correct. My first question is, uh, you've got planning board and ZBA if they were required? Planning board and ZBA are not required. This is an existing wall and we're replacing it. Same heights, shape, angles, tiers. Everything is a straight replacement except for the material. As you can see in the photo, um, the wall is in disrepair, it's in danger of collapse. Right here is where the wall is located and basically it's at the end of Ridgeway Drive and Greenway Drive. This is where Field Point Road is closed, okay? This is all wooded and treed area. We're not disturbing any of the trees or anything. And once we put the, the new wall back, uh, there'll be a, a whole planting area in between the walls. Okay. This photo is the similar uh, keystone faced wall that will be installed. And the color gray is similar to a walls that were installed in lower field point. Yeah. 
Anybody? Questions? No. No. Okay. All right. Well, it seems pretty straightforward. So I'm going to make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. It's almost over. <laughs> Steve Costa, an engineer. Is he an engineer? Yes. He thought he was the one that did work on our building. Okay. And last but not least, ARB 22 59, 28 Erie Street. Also an exterior elevation change. Oh, that's right. Is that Christina? It is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. You sound Can very you far me? away. You're very far away, you sound. Hold on. That's better. How's that? Can you hear me now? Better. Okay. Yep. Um, also, my. Um, the project designer is trying to get in as well, Lizette Garcia Elias. Okay. Okay, good. Hi. Okay. My, my name is Christina Griffin, I'm the architect. And I'm with Lizette, our um, project designer. I'm going to share the screen to show you the drawings. Um, can everyone see the drawings? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is just a, a, a 3D sketch showing the changes that we're planning to make to the back, the rear facade of this house. Um, we are looking at ways to improve the aesthetics since um, there's uh, a, an odd addition that was done um, probably uh, 30 years ago that has a flat roof and we're going to change that piece. It's up on the second floor. We're planning to renovate this end of the house. I don't know if everyone can see my cursor. Um, to have windows and uh, a facade that's more consistent with the style of the house. And we're planning to put a new trellis along this facade. It faces west just to get uh, some shading uh, from the sun on the patio. Um, I actually would like to go right to the photograph of the rear of the house. Can everyone see yeah. this? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can't see it. Sorry, hold on. This is the existing facade in the back. The house okay. is leans more like a Tudor, especially in the front. It has a, a lovely front facade that I'll tell I'll show you in a minute. But in the back, um, there are a lot of inconsistencies. And um, and if you see this box like shape on the second floor, we're planning to change the shape of that roof so that it has an angled roof and it lines up with the existing um, roof and fascia. Uh, and this um, protruding um, gable, we're planning to renovate it, put new windows and uh, that are in keeping with the casement windows that exist on the house. And then down below across the whole of uh, the kitchen and the facade um, next to it, we're planning to put uh, a trellis with uh, stone pillars. I'm going to show you now, um, go back to the drawings. Um, and I think I'll go straight to just a few more photographs so you can get a feeling for the house. Um, on this left, on the top left side, can everyone see this photo now? Yes? yes. Okay. This is the front of the house and you see it has a series, has gables and hip roof and uh, it's kind of eclectic, um, but it's very attractive and balanced. But in the back, the facade um, has a lot of um, items like the double hung windows and that box shaped addition that are inconsistent. And what we are planning to do 
um, is on the west, this same elevation. Um, this is our drawing to show uh, that we are planning to change the shape of this piece. It's actually a walk-in closet so that instead of having a flat roof, um, it will have an uh, angled uh, roof with the same uh, slope as existing, same material existing. We're aligning the fascia boards. We're lowering the window and having a window that matches the size of the windows that are now on the second floor with the same uh, two across, three down um, Munton pattern. Um, this facade with the sharp, with the gable roof, um, we're planning to uh, create a bay window here with casements um, similar to the existing casements. The bay window actually is important because it gives us a space to do the master bath inside. And then um, down below, we're planning to have two new pillars that frame this facade of the kitchen with a new trellis above. And then to the left, a shallower trellis, it's about three feet deep, that just runs along the facade and provides some shade here. It faces west and has a great deal of sun. On the north elevation, um, you're just seeing the side of our proposed trellis and then above um, casement window and bay window um, um, that will be put onto the second floor. I actually brought the trellis details with me tonight. I just wanted you to see um, the shapes that we're thinking of. These are shapes, actually, we found a, a really nice uh, a bracket in the front of the house. So that was our inspiration for the shape of the um, ends of the trellis members. Um, and this trellis will have, um, will all have a dark brown uh, color to match the dark pound trim that's on the house. And the stone pillars will match the stone that's already existing on the walls around the patio. Um, we are matching, um, if we're going back to the photographs of the house, um, I wanted you to know that um, our materials will be the same as existing. Um, instead of the clapboard that's currently at this funny addition on the second floor, we are going to go to um, stucco and then the same color to match existing. Um, all the trim will be dark brown to match existing, the trim at the bay window and around the new windows, and the trellis will also be the dark brown color. So we're going to stay with the same color scheme that exists. Uh, the windows will be Anderson that have a narrow line look to try to simulate the original um, steel casement windows that um, exist on the house in some areas. Uh, and just to show you some other photographs of the house down below, you just see uh, on the left that little that that box that's really uh, a walk-in closet that we're reconfiguring. We're taking off the clapboard, putting stucco to match existing, new windows to match existing. Um, this is that um, facade with the gable that we're renovating and putting new casement windows on. And this is the side of that, um, uh, of that same piece that comes out and we're taking the old windows out and replacing them with new Marvin windows. Um, here are just some photographs of houses in the neighborhood. There are very nice uh, picturesque homes, eclectic mostly, some Tudor, some clapboard colonials. It's a mix of styles. Are you going to be replacing the clapboard siding in front of the house with stucco? No, only we're only doing work on the back. Okay. Um, the um, focus of the work really is the second floor. This is our second floor plan showing a new master bath. Um, and we needed a little more space, which is why we designed a bay window out the back to get this bathroom to work. 
Um, then we took a look at how to improve the shape of that walk-in closet. So we're reconfiguring the roof. So it's similar to existing and lines up with the lines of the house. And then the trellis was um, not just for shading, also to improve the look of the back of the house, which is a long facade. And um, I think as you can see from the photograph, it's, um, we feel with the trellis detail, it will help to add uh, a detail to the back of the house that will um, help give some element that will pull these facades together. You've answered any right. questions I made. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get to go back to the drawing just a second. So I'm gonna land on the elevation. This is our west elevation. This is where all the changes are happening. Um, so I'd be happy to ha answer any questions that you might have. Randy? Uh, changing all the lighting in the back of the house also. The lighting? Yes. No, we're not. This trellis is going on top of the existing patio, and we're not planning to change any lighting at this point in time. OK. Ladies? Okay. We seem to have all our questions answered. I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds good. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Right okay. Good, good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Okay. I have nothing for housekeeping. Anybody? Anybody else? No. Okay, I will make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Larry, are you going to wait around for these uh, minutes? I'll be here for a little bit, but I, you can just leave them if you want. I'll be right down. Okay. I'll put them on the, uh, the uh, stand behind me if, if, if I leave before you do. Which is very great.